Hey guys, welcome to Hi. our Facebook Live on hey Goal905. Hello! Hi! Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hi. Family. <laughs> Hi, guys. Right. Okay, so we're going to give the, our, uh, our Gold Diggers a few minutes to, to, to get in into yeah, the stream. I'll take okay. everybody uh, a minute to get going. Yeah, and uh, I think a lot of people might be going, okay, gold, gold, gold. Hey, class! What's this class 25 there? <laughs> <laughs> That's because John Class is uh, joining us. John Class, you are class all around, lah. Your name is Class. You're working at yeah. Class. What's going on? You're full of you class. You have Class. You've got yeah. lots of those. Wow, thanks, man. <laughs> Hello. Class, and you have a bunch of little classes too, running around. Oh, <laughs> yes, I do. You're a, you're a school of, of classes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I, I do just call you fish. Class. Of classes, a family. I called a school. <laughs> I just called. I just. I called John class a fish. I just John called John class a fish. I'm so sorry. Really? Yeah. yeah. I bring my school around every time we go out. Yeah. That's right. yes. <laughs> hey guys. Hey everybody. Hey. Uh, hey Sharon, Esther, Corey, uh, Bella, Avril, yeah. Avril. Bell, McCray, City, Junaida, Moin. Moin. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Esther, Avril, Bell, Sharon. Gosh, Hi, Jillian, thank you so Virginia. much. Hey, okay, everybody. let's start. We've got about uh, just under 100 people joining us and I think more will join in. So we'll just get the ball rolling. Okay, guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So first of all, welcome to a very special evening. This is an evening to remember our beloved, not just colleague or friend, but family member from Go905, Chris mm -hmm. Ho, who we lost last week, uh, September 27, wasn't it? Was it 27? Forever yes, 27, it was, yeah. girl. Forever 27. Oh my God, oh Forever my 27. Goodness, no I didn't even make the connection. Right. Yeah. yeah. Forever 27. There's more I can tell you, that, there's more I can tell you about yeah. oh, okay, the 27 okay. thing, man. Right. Okay, but explain more. Uh, one, more, one more thing. Because the, uh, the listeners won't know the Forever 27 thing probably. So we can... Okay, okay. Yeah. Chris Ho, nobody knows his age and nobody will ever know and nobody should reveal if they know because yeah, right. he wanted it that way, okay? And so... <laughs> forever 27. Yeah, his epitaph is Forever 27. Um, yeah. So... We've all had um, our on on our own shows throughout Gold Nine Hundred Five and on Class Twenty Five, our own little tributes to Chris and talking about him. And Janice has been doing requests and dedication. So has Cat. Uh, X has been sharing stories. And we've all done a little bits here and there. Sue Ann, hi Sue Ann Kasem, uh, who also did a special <laughs> two to three o'clock um, special on the day that uh, we said goodbye to Chris Ho. And so today we thought we'll do something collectively where also the Gold 905 listeners and all the fans of Chris Ho can join in and I guess, you know, say goodbye to Chris one final time to, as a group, you know, together as a gathering mm. because mm. I think there are stories that I haven't heard from, from John and from, from X, from Kat, from, from uh, Denise. So it's like everybody wants to know what the stories are and I think we, throughout the night as well, any of our gold diggers, if you have a story about Chris Ho, a connection that you had with him, feel free and if we can spot it, we'll share it as well. If not... Mm. Is there forever on this post. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, and so to start off, who are we starting off the evening with? We're starting off with John. John. That's right. So right. John, John Class, thank you so much for joining us. And I know you're going to be rushing off your show at 8 o'clock. And uh, thanks for being here. You have a, a great friendship with Chris Ho. Please tell everybody you know, everything that, uh, you know, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, from the time you were born. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. First of all, thanks for having me, uh, you know, today, today on, on Gold's uh, Facebook Live. I truly appreciate this. Uh, and I met Chris, right, in, uh, in the early 90s when I joined Rediffusion. All right. So um, obviously we did, we did uh, you know, different shows. But what we did was um, we, we had this, this um workshop dj workshop that we both were instructors in so we we worked a lot because uh you know together because of that and i think there's a there's a the slide a picture there that annabelle can can show there there's a classroom mm -hmm. of people and chris and i are in that picture as well and um I, i'm not sure which slide with that no not this one the next one uh -oh. um, sorry <laughs> yeah that's uh, this thought, is wow the, you guys look great <laughs> <laughs> and if you can spot chris of course he's the one without the hair <laughs> I'm just oh him. Gosh. Wow. even back then he didn't have hair me. Goodness. Sorry? Even back then, he didn't have hair. On you, John. My goodness, I just spotted you as well. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's little John? me. Yeah, Where's you know. John? Right Where's in John? the middle John? above right, the right, guy right. in the red shirt. Oh, yeah, behind the guy. I was wearing a blue shirt. Yeah. Oh, so that goodness. was uh, Chris and I in the DJ workshop. Uh, we had lots of students. In fact, I think Rod Montero, even Gene Danker came uh, through this workshop, uh, amongst others. Uh, and it was really, really, you know, a, a ball of a time because we met so many characters and... Um, 
it's just the early days of working together with Chris Holm that I remember fondly, and that was in Rediffusion. And since then, I mean, I remember Kat sharing uh, this, and a number of people actually shared this, even at the uh, at his funeral, about, um, you know, how he'd always come and talk about these taxi stories, right? He'd always had a taxi <laughs> story. <laughs> yes. yes. I remember this, even when I was in Rediffusion, when I first joined, <laughs> he would come in and start to talk about these taxi uncles he met. And, and uh, until today, he's still doing that, right? So it's something that's he's never changed about that. Chris Hall. He's, yeah, he's definitely still doing that because, uh, yeah, when, when I joined, I, I learned very, very quickly that, okay, he's going to come equipped every day with a new taxi <laughs> story. <laughs> and some adventures, I must say, you know, every, every day I, he came into the uh, studio to the station he had some taxi i've never heard anybody who had that many uh, you know taxi experiences to talk about but uh, chris had had that you know i've never heard anybody else talk about these taxi uncles and taxi stories and um okay let's let's go back to that first picture that you know you, you flashed annabelle just now the first one yeah that was uh, the last time all of us because uh chris called us his special seven so seven of us my wife valerie and my two daughters at Slinden who is also a dear friend from Rediffusion, her husband. And we used to hang out. And why he called us the Special Seven was because when we got together, we always talking about positive things, right? Having a positive mindset and uh, really was a positive bunch. And I think that's why he really uh, enjoyed our company. And uh, yeah, so he called us. I just found this out, actually. I did not know until a friend of, of ours from Hong Kong said that he used to always talk about you guys, called you guys a special seven because mm -hmm. he, you know, he, he was, you know, he lived on his own and so he needed uh, family and, you know, to always keep things positive. So that's basically the last picture that we had uh, because that's the last time you could go out as a group of seven. And that was sometime earlier this year, I think in April, March or April or so. And that was, uh, yeah, precious, precious picture to me right now. We've, in fact, we're sharing this amongst our friends uh, earlier on as well. So I thought it'd be nice to share this picture. Okay, nice. can we move down the slide? I'm just going to talk a little bit more about uh, the pictures that we have. Okay, so this was his birthday last year. And uh, obviously, we couldn't go out because I think there was restrictions uh, for, for, for dining out. But uh, we had it at my place instead. And that was Chris uh, with his birthday cake. And uh, again, the special seven uh, with him. And um, and he was really happy. In fact, uh, he did say that that particular year, last year's birthday, was uh, the happiest he's had, uh, you know, in a long time. So I was glad to hear that as well when he said that in hindsight. Can I, uh, can next I picture. John, are those are those dollar bills on the cake? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's about <laughs> manifesting wealth and all that stuff. So that's <laughs> right. okay, I was okay, wondering. Okay. Good spotting. Good spotting. Wow. <laughs> yeah, good spotting. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you guys could see those, those dollar bills. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that that was you know one of the things. Okay, so this was me when I first you know joined Media Corp again uh, a few years or three years ago, and you know at that time when I first came in, I didn't really have uh, like a fixed station, so I was like bouncing from from different shows, just you know hosting uh, shows with you guys uh, in goal in, in class. And this was me with Chris Ho, and it was the first time we actually ever co-hosted a show, right? So I, I said wow. it in the words over there. That's first time I'm doing the show with a legend. And uh, like you said, because we came from Rediffusion and Chris had forgotten that I had, would have known a lot of these old songs because in Rediffusion, we used to play a lot of oldies. And he, he put me in the, he tried to put me in the spot by, by giving me this music trivia, right? And uh, he, he threw a few of these old s songs at me he thought I wouldn't know and actually did know. And he was really surprised, <laughs> pleasantly surprised because, you know, Chris is a guru when it comes to music, right? Mm, <laughs> so absolutely. I, was glad I made the cut <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Yeah, so this was him on his home stretch uh, three years ago. That's me and him. Uh, next nice. picture, please. And this was the you know the the uh, event that we all loved. Yeah, <laughs> the Subaru, Subaru Car Challenge. Challenge. Subaru yes. Car Challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our very first together, we took this picture together, and uh, yeah, one of the few pictures now I look back fondly on uh, because yeah, we're wearing our different station tees, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, still friends as always. So that's that's that was a wonderful picture and memory for me all as right. well. Looking right. so good, both of you. Yeah, <laughs> sharp, <laughs> matching glasses. This, been, this must have been uh, really early on because there's still quite a few people around the cast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was the first day, first day, yeah. First All day. right, okay, first day, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's basically, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the history of it. And I want to tell you one thing about something special that he left for me. 
all right something really special um and it you know because chris has been for over the past i think three years has been asking me that i should you know record uh, music again right and i i was wanting to record music for the past i think six years i've been thinking i've got to do something again. i've got to do something get in get in music and over the past three years, he's been sending me stuff saying, you know, John, you'll sound good with uh, this sort of music and this sort of songs. Mm. But it mm. never was something that I could relate to. Although he said, you know, your voice, your tone, you'll sound good at that. So I, I tried a few things, never really. He, he got up one day and said, hey, John, I think, you know, doing a cover of uh, Do Wadi, did you know that? Here she was. He said, yeah. do it in, uh, you know, he gave me this term and do it in that particular style. And I tried it. Yeah. It just didn't work because it was not something I yeah. could identify with. Anyway, so he kept going, kept going, kept going. So I started, re you know, releasing some of the stuff that I was comfortable uh, doing uh, yeah. uh, for my latest EP. And then uh, on um, sometime in just uh, in sometime in June, he came to my place. Uh, for for dinner again with with the, the special seven, and um, he said, "John, when are you gonna do this? You have to do something different. You know, I want you to do something different that we can play it. We played on ninety seven and all that stuff." And I said, um, "Okay, but uh, I tell you what, right? You've been telling about why not you produce this song for me, right? You produce it. I'll just sing whatever you ask me to sing, right? You produce it. I'm not gonna produce it because I don't yeah. understand it." So he yeah. said, "Okay." I said, "I'll tell you what. I've got like a couple of uh, three songs already done." You pick one of these three songs that you feel that could be turned into a remix, uh, EDM remix. So he said, you, you know, do an EDM song, right? So Whoa. anyway, so he picked one of these you songs. Didn't. You didn't. Yeah, exactly. So he picked one of these songs. <laughs> said, okay, this would make a good uh, EDM remix. I said, okay. So I, I worked with a few producers, and I said, uh, okay, I, I'm going to give you these producers. These are the things I've done uh, in the EDM space. Uh, you pick one. You tell me, and we, you know, you you work with a guy, and and we'll come up with something, right? So we uh, so that was a Saturday when he came to my place. And on Sunday, that week, one week later, we completed that song. All right, we completed that song. And I was happy with it. And he said, well, John, if you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm so glad I could do this for you. And I said, well, thank you so much. On Wednesday, he went into the hospital, never came out. So that was the last uh. thing, you know, he really did for me. And um, I'm, I, I, you know, I, that, that's what I, I said to him. I thanked him on, in fact, because I, I was with him for his final hours. And that's the one thing I got to do when I, when I actually I got to see him one last time and i said thank you chris i you know this is i understand now a gift that you've been uh, you know wanting to do for me and you finally done it and i'm going to take this gift and uh, you know and and see it through mm -hmm. and uh, i sang that no song way. that's one of the last songs i sang to him at his uh, final hours and um, yeah it meant a lot to me to be able to do that so i had closure in that respect so i'm grateful yeah that is a great story thank you yeah and uh when are we going to hear the song i hope to hear it yeah it's and going to be released on um, on a day after his birthday. So his birthday is on the 28th of October. Yeah. It's going to be released on the 29th. We've just got the release date. Yeah. So that's coming up end nice. of this month. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Okay, we'll definitely and play EDM, it on, on Go. I don't care what our bosses say. We're playing an EDM song yeah. on Go. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. And tell us about this Forever 27. Is there an, another story you're telling us about 27? Okay, so yeah, 27 so he, Forever 27 is what he's always said. In fact, that's that's what he said he wanted and he, uh, on his... Uh, you know, and, and the final, you know, sort of eulogy and, and everything. And uh, yeah, like you said, right, so, uh, someone pointed it out to us that he passed away on the 27th. Yeah. And um, on his funeral, which was on the 1st of October, 27 days later would be his birthday. All right. right. And I'm going to reveal That's something cool. else, uh, you know, which maybe maybe others would uh, want to take note of as well. Uh, Wait, uh, you know, the purse that was driving this casket. <laughs> Sorry? There's another as if that's 27 not a number already. That's the, yeah, yeah, well. Okay, oh, what is it? What is it? No, yeah, I was just saying ahead. there's another 27 link. Anyway, go ahead, John. There's 27 links all around. Yeah, but uh, this <laughs> one more last one. So, you know, the, the hearse that was driving the casket to Mandai Crematorium, the car plate number was 8388. If you add that up, what does it add? <laughs> 27. 27. Absolutely. Oh, my right. God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, since, it was, since it was forever 27, uh, if we were coming, uh, if we were counting forward, uh, 27 days later, he would be 28 on the 28th. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> but why is, can anybody tell me, tell us why it was forever 27? What was that? Know. And by the way, 270, <laughs> it's 270 people on, on, on watching us right now. Oh my, God, my hair is standing. Wow. My hair is standing. Wow. Okay. So, Will, yeah, does anybody know why forever 27? 
What is how he felt? Twenty-seven is significant. He, he always in the felt, uh, you know, in, in in him, he was twenty-seven. Just like I feel, I'm twenty-eight. So you know, he felt he's always twenty-seven. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. what, what you are there, I think, in the end, right? right. You can think right. of any good age. 27 is perfect to just stop perfect. that. Perfect, right? yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. forever nine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow, so... that's fabulous, John. Wonderful. Thank you so wow, much. Look at for, this. For Joni sharing. Mitchell, Kurt Cobain, Jim Morrison, all that at age 27. Oh my God, is yeah. he part of the 27 yeah. Club? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, he is. Part of the 27 Club. Yeah. Amy Winehouse, <laughs> Janis Joplin. Right. And I can tell you, I think Esther, one of our collect number collectors on Go Nano Five, she collects numbers for I don't know what reason, but I think uh, yeah, four D I think we're gonna go by four D. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fabulous, John. Thank you so much for yeah. the stories. It's amazing. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Oh, um, would you like to stay on with us until? The- yeah, sure, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Because yeah. now we move on to to Will, Mister X. Yeah. A uh, longtime friend as well of Chris Ho, and you always had uh, Chris Ho, you know, passing his star, his uh, show on over to you. So you had a crossover. You had many, many evenings of laughter and mm-hmm. chit chats together. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. us what you uh, you want to share. Uh, how much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, uh, you know, I had, I spent, I spent the weekend actually trying to summarize and and uh, telling, uh, telling myself how much of. How much of my history with this man can can I condense into what I'm about to say? So I said I had to pick I had to pick a stream and stick to it. But I give may I offer one uh, theory uh, with regard uh, to the 27 number? And this is this is not uh, he's not been it's not been borne out by Chris or anybody else. But I I couldn't help noticing that. Uh, that in terms of his affinity or his love uh, for his, for I think someone uh, who spoke at his service uh, said that uh, his his uh, imagination home, his home, his home of imagination uh, was Thailand, and uh, if uh, you know the the Thais are both uh, traditional, also uh, there's a lot of folklore, but there's also a fair amount of superstition or at least uh, a certain a certain uh, fondness uh, for numerology. Now, the if you add the two digits that make up twenty-seven, uh, uh, you add you you come up with nine, and nine among the all the numerals in Thai, uh, whether you call it mythology or history, uh, nine is the most important number. While three is also important and very uh, f- uh, uh, very auspicious, uh, nine is very special, uh, and I'll, and this I know to be true. First of all. Uh, the the Thai numeral uh, nine is uh, is pronounced Kao. Now Kao, uh, like like homonyms, uh, I, I think uh, Denise uh, will bear bear this out. Uh, is these are sound alike uh, f- uh, characters, and Kao uh, in in addition to being representative of the number nine is also representative of the word the Thai word for rice, which is very important in their in their social system. And it's also a, 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 a word that sounds like the Thai equivalent of moving forward. Now, this is the, this is the fact. Uh, one of the things that, uh, if, if I had a uh, choice uh, of gift, which I would basically uh, take it off him, if I wanted something that, that, that I saw that he wore, and if I wanted it, I would tell him. Uh, but he's, he said no. Every time I asked him for the cap, for the for the baseball cap that had the Thai uh, numeral Kao uh, on the front, so uh, so this in 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 terms of uh, cheering myself up and what I think I would have loved to have said to him in all the things that I had I had an opportunity to say to him, uh, I wanted the I wanted the cow. If anybody knows where this is and if he didn't <laughs> make specific plans, I would like to have it if you don't mind. If but it's not the will. Not, will. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, that there was this one thing that uh, we also did. But whenever, whenever it was a question of me giving him something and he giving me something. I mean, talk about the endless dinners he would show up with, for example. And you know, I would message him while he was on the air and say to listen, you're not go. Uh, you're you're going to be staying uh, late today, so uh, I'll feed you. Okay. So don't worry about dinner. I'll bring you some. So some, something like that. And we also had this trade. Uh, some of the things uh, that uh, we traded uh, were these hat pins, pins that we would attach to our baseball caps. Um, uh, he went away uh, on Friday. 
uh, with something wearing wearing a, a pin, uh, which was a kind of a pentagram uh, type pin on the front of his uh, baseball cap. Uh, I I think he knows very well that I had my eye on it for quite some time, you know. And um, <laughs> he he but he gave me something as well. He said, you know, it can't it won't be the pin, but I'll give you I'll give you a star pin that you can attach to your. Uh, to your jacket or, or your or other, um, other hat, but uh, you're not you're not getting the pentagram. Uh, in last week, uh, on for for the last several weeks on our shows, uh, remember we've got a program called uh, Give It a Gold Star, right? So last week uh, when the news broke, exactly a week ago now, I'm sorry, I'm trying to compose myself here. Last week, uh, it, uh, out of respect. Uh, at the passing of our dear, dear friend and family member, uh, we didn't give out a gold star. And uh, I, I can say, and I won't explain this any further, uh, but uh, but it was going to be my week. I was going to be handing out, we were going to make these videos of us handing out the gold stars. Uh, last week was my week, you know. And I think uh, I'd like to say that uh, we decided against giving out the gold star because, you know, it would have only gone to one person. And I can say uh, without further explanation that that gold star uh, has been uh, returned uh, to Chris Ho. Now, that, that's, uh, that's my immediate recollection. Um, I think, we, if, uh, Bell, if you have pictures that you, that you can put up, let me just uh, sort of maybe touch on the chapters that are represented in these pictures. Now, you see the pic, if, you, if you're looking at it and you see him uh, at full length, uh, at uh, and you, I don't think has anyone seen this uh, picture like this before? Now the the picture on the left is Chris uh, at, uh, at Berlin Airport. Uh, you can see he's got a number of passes. Now he had been there to attend a festival, a music festival, and uh, you'll see a, a picture later of the of the lady who helped to put that together. Now. That's Chris at Berlin. One of I think I think as a as a singer as a performer, probably one of his uh, proudest moments, because he was there to be part of a music festival, where he uh, where his his most recent band. Uh, John, uh, help me out with this. Uh, was was he last last with the Pawn Stars? Uh, yes, yeah, 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 the yeah, last yeah. band with uh, Suzanne and others. So so this this group. This group, uh, uh, an original member of Zircon Lounge and Transformer, Yao and Suzanne were, were members of this band. These people, Singapore group, uh, opened for Blondie. Okay? Uh, now, you see the picture on the right. Uh, DJ Boy, who's not photographed very often, but, uh, but uh, myself and Chris and, and Boy, uh, at the, I think all of you were there. Uh, we we went out to dinner at the at the yeah. Hyde Hotel. Yeah. Remember, Straits Kitchen. Straits uh, Kitchen. Yeah. That's yeah. right. A, a few years ago, uh, and then obviously you know um, um, when uh, when when Boy uh, sent uh, this picture and others uh, to us, uh, you know he was he was in absolute bits. The the memory of, attached to this particular picture is um, from soon after this picture was taken. Chris uh, put in. Put in a special set at a uh, solid gold night. Remember that, guys. Uh, he he played special, awesome. and, uh, and uh, at at one point during that very memorable solid gold night, the the three people you see in that picture were on the stage or behind the console at the same time. Remember that? Yep. So that, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty special uh, for me. Are, are, are there any yeah. other pictures, uh, Bell? If you want to bring those up. Uh, you're helping me out a great deal, by the way, so that I can jump chapters. Now, uh, now you see the, the lady who's kissing him, and 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 he's uh, he's hugging her, right? Now, this is the lady Andrea, um, who uh, is in Germany at the moment. Uh, she lives here, but uh, because of COVID and restrictions and so forth, and of course, she she heard only very very recently in the last week, and so wasn't able to figure out the whole quarantine thing. Uh, but what she did was uh, she sent me a, an audio message and I promised her that uh, if she sent me a, a message, I would see to it that uh, I would play it uh, to, uh, to Chrissy uh, before he, he moved on. The picture, I think everybody recognizes uh, Loretta. Uh, and uh, this was a picture she sent me, in fact, earlier today to say that uh, Chris was in 
seventh heaven uh, at the prospect because shortly after this picture was taken, uh, he spoke to Slipknot. Uh, so, uh, so she helped to organize all that. Uh, Andrea, by the way, you know, she was put together. She had she had been responsible for such things, but before she moved to Singapore, uh, was uh, was the organizer of the uh, Berlin uh, uh, Pride uh, Parade. You know, uh, the lo Pride uh, Love uh, Love Parade. Love Parade. And, love Parade, and and so uh, where people like um, uh, Chicks on Speed and of course Chris's band and so forth, and one other thing was that while she she also managed me uh, for a time, she's also responsible uh, for. Uh, she I think she managed uh, Millie Vanilli at some point. Uh, she also uh, Boney M, uh, also uh, uh, members of uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and and on the subject of uh, chicks on speed. Last night uh, I had mm. sent a, a message uh, to her uh, to say that uh, we we might be doing this right uh, today. And that uh, I would be showing the picture, um, and so she said to me two two memories that you, you'd like to pass on on my behalf, and that is, you know what, Chris gave the warmest hugs. That, that was one. Oh thing. my God, he did. Yes, he really he does. did. He just did. Yeah. If, you know, he 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 you you definitely felt him. You know, you definitely felt him. And this is the this is the thing that uh, that uh, I, I think about sometimes. Uh, and since the tragic news that. Um, grief in the age of COVID, you know, we we throw we we are we're doing this because because uh, not only because we want to, but because we have to. That you know, wouldn't be in any other circumstances, wouldn't we be? Wouldn't we have our arms around each other? I don't think you could pry us apart uh, <laughs> a, a moment like this one. You you know, but. Here we are, you know. I so much wanted to throw my arms around uh, uh, Connie and uh, and and Arena, and you know what? I think uh, I think uh, Vern and I went for broke and gave each other a huge hug anyway. We broke the law, <laughs> and, uh, but I don't care. Exactly. We hugged. And we I don't so care. I, yeah, all those moments. Yes, exactly. I, I may be biased, but you know what? I don't care. So so there we are. Uh, so that that was the the, the Andrea uh, piece of the story, and uh, and. Uh, you know, parting, uh, which is obviously such a great sorrow, uh, was something that, um, which Chris, uh, no, no matter no matter how you are, uh, any level of predictability that goes into the way we map out our lives, you'll always be caught out by that spanner in the works when you're caught off guard and things are upon you in a very very big way. I think uh, I'll just. Uh, I'll just pick up on anything else that everyone says because uh, if I continue, I think uh, I'm afraid uh, eight o'clock the night flight might be in some jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> hugs, hugs, Mister nice. X. Well, thank you. Hugs, yes. hugs. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mister X, and and just jump in any time. Um, so this is uh, I, I don't know a, a cat. You're gonna go on air in just a little bit. She's actually juggling her show right now. So you yeah. got like, four minutes. I have uh, just about three, <laughs> three, yeah, three minutes, yeah. Um, but it's okay. okay. I can do. I can do my bit. Um, okay. And if I have to go, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, so okay. you know, come back to I you met Chris. Well. Yeah, I mean, I met Chris uh, when I joined the Gold family, and he was very, very welcoming. Although he looked very, very intimidating. Um, I was I was actually quite afraid. I was like, whoa, this guy has a lot of tattoos. <laughs> it, it was uh, very, very intimidating. But he came in and the voice that came out, I was like, he's so nice. I thought he just sounded nice on air. No, but he's really nice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, slowly but surely, I became uh, the, the, the gal that he shared his taxi stories with. And I would, I would look forward to it every day. And I know Chris will come into the studio at 3.30 hmm. and he'll start prepping for his show. There was hmm. one day that at 4.10, he wasn't in. And I called him. I was like, Chris, why are you, why are you so late? <laughs> his show, <laughs> his show yeah. starts at 5. And I was like, where are you? Why are you so late? He's like, don't worry, darling. I'm in the, I'm in the lobby. I'm coming up now. But that was the kind of uh, relationship we started to have. And uh, just like X uh, was feeding him, Chris mm. was feeding me. He mm. would come in oh. to the studio with food. Uh, he would buy McDonald's. He would buy an extra set of fries or an extra burger. And he would be like, darling, you need to eat more. <laughs> That's mm. what he used to always mm. say to me. And uh, yeah, and he would 
he would uh he the first thing he said to me when he first met me was he complimented me on you know he's like I think you sound really good for radio. Anyways, we had a lot of a lot of little bits and bobs and Chris and I really really we laughed a lot in between our shows because our shows were back to back. We had a lot of uh, inside jokes and we laughed and uh, one of the times that we laughed was uh, when I recorded a video of Chris dancing because we were trying to promote Solid Gold Night. Uh, mm. This video, by the way, went on for about 56 seconds. Yeah, but we can only show you a short <laughs> snippet today. But uh, take a look at this video of Chris. And I'm just going to let everyone in on this little joke that we had because after that, we couldn't stop laughing for five minutes. Okay, it's <laughs> it's Chris and... Um, him trying to dance to the hustle. I think Vern, you have uh, oh. that video. I'm gonna yeah. try to to share oh. this yeah. one right if, now. If we can we share that well. video, that would be great. It was for a solid gold night, and I made everybody Woo! dance to the hustle, and his was just <laughs> adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I couldn't no I it was it. Yeah. so funny it was the funniest yeah. thing and we watched the video back and we just couldn't <laughs> stop laughing and I was like wow Chris I did not know uh, you had those moves okay anyways guys I'm gonna hand it over to Denise uh, but I'll come back in about two minutes and I'll continue in, in, in a while okay Okay. okay, thanks, Kat. Okay. The baby of Go Number Five. <laughs> Thank you for that video. It's awesome. And yeah. Chris had the moves and he had the look as well. Um by the way, I'm just gonna let everybody know I'm gonna be posting that video either on a gold Instagram or my own. I think I'll do both and everybody can get the full <laughs> glory of his dancing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> we'll definitely show that video for sure, Nomster Nomster. Anyway, Congratulations um, by the way, uh, Denise, on a wonderful season uh, at uh, Art Forever Young. Well Thank done. you. Thank you. Us. Yeah, love I just you, uh, you, closed you. the show in the theater, but um, onwards to our friend Chris. Um, I, I, I wrote everything down. I hope you don't mind, only because I wasn't sure if I could get a grip of yeah. uh, my you can emotions, do it, but uh, I'm going to try my best. It. Can I just start by saying that Chris meant so much to so many different people in so many different ways. And um, this includes our listeners. And I just start off by sharing with you a message that I received from a listener called Ranjani last Monday when news mm. broke of Chris's passing. And she texted, she said, Chris was such a special person. He stood out because of the way he looked, yet he had his own quiet ways and he was such a good son. I'm going to miss Chris tremendously. I usually have my radio turned on from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. But Chris was my guy on the way home after often a very stressful day. And he was so zen and so peaceful and it just made everything okay. I never got to thank him for his company, the peace that he brought me and the memories. And I think that most DJs have no idea how much of an impact they have on their listeners. So here I am thanking you, Mike, Benetta, Catherine, Mr. X, Sue Ann, Uncle Brian, Paul, and Elena, and Denise for all that you've done for us. May Chris rest in peace. Take care, everyone. So thank you, Ranjani, wow. for sharing that. Thanks, Ranjani. Beautiful. Thank I cannot that. express enough how you know messages like that and from other listeners have really mm. helped us through the past week on air. You guys have lifted us up um, just like Chris lifted you up when he was on air. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So I'm gonna share a story of the first time I ever met Chris. And this was like more than a decade ago, way before we mm. became colleagues on Gold 905. We had a mutual friend who said, hey, you're a foodie, right? You like Thai food? I got a friend who knows where to find the most authentic um, oh, yeah. Thai food in Singapore. So I was like, yes, 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 I won, right? It turned out her friend was Chris Ho, and I literally was like floored. I was so scared and nervous to meet this legend, this icon. I don't think, I mean, I was literally born into a world where Chris was already uh, a star, you know? So I, I haven't existed in a world where nobody knew Chris. Chris was already known. So for me to meet Chris Ho over Thai food, I was just beside myself. And he turned out to be lovely. He recommended the best food at this uh, pokey little joint, real, real hole in the wall, real laksa place, but so much atmosphere uh, in uh, Golden Mile Complex, which I think a lot of people know was one of his uh, haunts. He loved Golden Mile Complex. Mm -hmm. 
So mm. <laughs> um, that night we bonded not only over Thai food, but um, you know, over the makan, but also over music. Because you know, Chris loved music. He was so passionate about it, and he loved meeting people who might also share his passion. So he immediately grilled me, your DJ, right? What, who, who are the artists you like? So I was like, I love Joni Mitchell. And then he was like, ah, he grabbed me. And then he said, great, you love Joni Mitchell, so do I. Then he said, no, 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 but I have to test you first. See whether you pass the test. He said, which Joni Mitchell song do you like? I'm sorry to announce that I failed the test. <laughs> I chose the most mainstream, most known Joni Mitchell songs, you know, both sides now, um, yeah. California, Carrie. And he was like, girl, you need to go home and listen to yeah. Hajira. And he was Hajira. like, no, no, no. Best of, best of all, I tell you what, I send you, I send you some tracks. I start you <laughs> off first. And that very night, he emailed me tracks from Hajira. He told me why I need to listen to them. And then after that, he said, hey, don't stop there. you got to get onto Ricky Lee Jones. And then I said, oh, I've heard. And he says, no, 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 no. you got to hear this track, this track, this track. And then he sent a third email that same night saying, and while you're at it, I'm going to start you on Amy Lou Harris. And yeah. so that was the start yeah. of our friendship. Um, yeah, more than a decade ago. And then, of course, when we became colleagues at Gold, I was so happy so so happy and um uh the first time we did makan kakis together we filmed an episode i said chris since we're doing an episode where you know we show djs and where they like to eat can you take us back to that first place that where you know we ever met and so we filmed that first episode and recorded that first episode of makan kakis back at mm. okay i tell you all uh, so take it down because the food is really very good you need to go to tida cuisine corner golden mile complex and mm. order the som tam which is the green papaya yeah. salad. You better get yeah. the tom yam gung, which is the prawn yeah. tom yam, Chris's favorite. He said when he drank it, he was like in seventh heaven. Yeah. And he <laughs> loved the uh, stir fried pork with mint yeah. leaves. So those are the yeah. three things you must eat in honor of Chris when you go to Tida Cuisine mm. Corner at Golden Mile Complex. So I think I have a, a, a picture here um, to show you or a little video you can see um, of us eating <laughs> there at um, Tida. And I've just oh. included a few other uh, pictures um, of, of Chris. Like my favorite picture of Chris, I snapped him secretly uh, while mm. he was at work. Can you see how much information it. he is surrounded by? I, I mean, yes. Chris yes. love that photo. Yes. Had the most <laughs> incredible work ethic, guys. He yeah. was yeah. there, like yeah. Kat was saying one hour two hours three hours before his shift he was there prepping he was there reading up on things that he wanted to you know verify clarify he was surrounded by his um, reference books his handwritten notes he had his whole setup you know he had his papers propped up he had his reference yeah. book on the side those are all the just google tabs, google tabs essentially for us but <laughs> yeah. for him. we do everything on the computer but just chris was all school i yep. love that about him he had everything yep. in a book in a notebook, in a reference book, an encyclopedia. He had written it down on cards. And the console is very big, but he yeah. had no room. So he even yeah. used to have his own little stand. There's an extra stand he used to put on his left yeah. side so he could pop up yeah. more books. Right. And um, yeah, it was just a sight to behold how much he loved music and how seriously he took it and how seriously he took his job Um introducing listeners to Amazing. all of the songs that we play on gold 905 right. so right yeah that that that's really one of my favorite pictures of him hard at yeah. work right so um the next memory i'm going to share with you and it's a short one was i was always badgering him about food right because we had a shared love for thai food but there was another mm. episode of makan kakis where I, i'm afraid i badgered a lot of my colleagues into cooking so from sharing with us your favorite place to go out to eat i insisted that they cook on video and chris was like i don't want to i'm a really bad cook and he says i'm very embarrassed please don't make me but i don't know why maybe because he's so lovely he agreed in the end and we laughed so hard when we made this particular episode with chris because um he said all right i'm going to cook you my favorite breakfast and um it involved um oats uh, but mm -hmm. he kind of like souped it up, you know, with chia mm -hmm. seeds, wolf berries, jumbo <laughs> raisins. Oh. And then on top of that, 
the, the reason why we, we laughed so hard was because I was shocked when I showed up and he says, oh, we're going to cook it in the office pantry microwave. <laughs> and so he put everything in a bowl, added water, stirred it up. He put it into the microwave and then ding! After that, he said, um, okay, so the, the secret ingredient, and this is why it was so surprising to me. He was always such a surprising person. You know, just when you think maybe I've got you sus, he comes out of left field with another surprise. And he said, my secret ingredient ingredient is ensure I've taken my mother's ensure milk powder and that's what I add. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's not like he needed ensure, but he put it in and he, he said it really tastes good. And he had such a sweet tooth. So that was his yeah. like sugar uh, in yeah. the actual dish. And the other thing that we laughed about so much was because of the name he gave the dish and he called it his Chachambo sludge, as in a you know, it was a pun on chachampo. He champo everything yeah. together like right, rojak, right. and uh, it really did look like sludge. Um, but that's besides the point. The the point I'm trying to make here really is that um, it looked and it sounded very dubious this dish, but um, it actually tasted so good, guys. Oh, wow. And the cherry on top was. <laughs> Just as a special treat, because he had such a sweet tooth, mm, he would put mm. a special gummy candy on top, and he would eat it last. <laughs> um, I couldn't believe and, it when I saw that. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, it looked bad. It really did look bad, but it tasted so good, guys. And I think that was another kind of cheeky reminder from Chris that you know you should never judge anything or anyone yeah. by its yeah. first appearance. Yeah. You got to taste yeah. and see. You got to yeah. get to know the person, yeah. and. Um, you know, speaking of appearances, Chris Ho really loved to dress up, or maybe yep. he just liked to indulge me because I love to dress up. And so, um, if we could take a look at the next slide, you can see that's oh, that's Chris at one of our Rock of Ages parties um, yeah. on the top hey, left hand girl. corner. He's dressed as Garth from Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Party mm. on, excellent. So and I'm dressed as a goth, so it was Garth meets goth. And I remember him being <laughs> so excited because I think this was his first, if I'm not wrong, his first Rock of Ages party. And he, he yeah. took the, the the dressing up very seriously and we were talking about <laughs> wigs. And he was like, hey, can you lend me a blonde wig? Do you have? And I was like, I have any number of wigs you want to borrow. <laughs> and uh, so that was, uh, one of those fun memories. So you can see the two pictures, a group picture of us from that Rock of Ages party. By the way, Mr. X, great host. And um, <laughs> the other pictures are just of um, other times we got together as a Gold 905 family. The middle top picture is of Chris at his birthday. And he loved cake. I think that, you know, because of his sweet tooth, <laughs> any chance we can get together and have cake, he was like right there. And then um, the next picture is me at my birthday with Chris and then the rest of the Gold 905 family. So those are good memories. Um, so uh, I think in conclusion, I just want to say I'm just so glad. I feel very blessed to have um, shared a little, little, little tiny time with Chris and you know he was a man who was deeply enigmatic and mysterious and surprising I cannot profess to have known him very very well but what I knew I loved and I'm so glad that uh, he shared with me his eclectic taste in music the women he loved the Jonies and the Rickies and the Emmy Lou's and even the shares you know he used to text me when I got a share song on my playlist because he was always listening he said hey not fair how come you got gypsies tramps and yeah. thieves oh, yeah. I want to play it on my show yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um I'm also super duper grateful that our last face-to-face -face encounter was a little bit earlier this year when you know the rules of workplace safe distancing were relaxed a little bit for a small window of time and so my last face-to-face -face encounter with him um uh you know you talk about the hugs that Chris Ho gives he mm. gave me the biggest hug and we embraced for a really really long time because I think that yeah. The pandemic has isolated us so much mm, and uh, mm. we just crave that kind of connection, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's my last uh, memory of him face to face in the Gold 905 studio. And um, it's not something that's going to be easily forgotten. So I just want to share one more slide. You can take a look because this is just one of hundreds of pictures of Chris yeah. with our Gold 905 listeners. 
Uh, mm. You know, he genuinely, sometimes I would complain because tired or hot, but he would never, ever complain. He loved going out to meet people genuinely and, you know, yeah. to, to say hi, give out like freebies. And so there's a picture at the top left uh, with uh, one of our listeners, Amos, who bought us nasi lemak and fried chicken wings. I tell you, me and Chris were ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is just like just a few, a selection of a few pictures of, uh, of us out and about. And then uh, just a behind the scenes shot of myself and I'm sandwiched by the two most handsome men in gold. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. Chris looking very spiffy, very uh, dressed uncharacteristically yes. on Chris, yes. but he really loved dressing up, so that was fun for him. Yes. Um, yeah, that, that's us at one of our photo shoots. Um, okay, I promise, last thing I'm going to share. Um, at Chris's funeral, uh, somebody spontaneously broke out into song, and mm. it was by, guess who? Joni Mitchell, right. of course. <laughs> and right. um, the words went like this. All the people at this party, they've got a lot of style. They've got yeah. stamps of many countries. They've got passport smiles. Some yeah. are friendly, some are cutting, some are watching it from the wings. Some are standing in the center, giving to get something. I feel like I'm sleeping. Can you wake me? You seem to have a broader sensibility. I'm just living on nerves and feelings with a weak and lazy mind and coming to people's parties, fumbling deaf, dumb, and blind. So, you know, while he loved meeting people and making those very genuine connections, there's also that sense of always being on the outside, you know, standing out, standing apart, being different. But that's what made him so special. Chris was a champion of all of us freaks and geeks. And so I'll bookend this segment with another listener, one of Chris's youngest fans, who knows a thing or two about being different and also knows a thing or two about Chris's kindness. Um, I just want to say thanks to his mom, Jillian, for sharing this. Please have a look at what Max has to say. Hi, Chris Ho. Thank you for showing me that being different is okay. Thank you for being kind and friendly whenever we met. I hope one day we'll, again, like we'll meet again. Um, I'm definitely going to miss hearing your voice on the radio when we are stuck in a traffic jam in the evening going home. You're the coolest DJ I know. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, yeah. Denise. Well, um, so it's just about 7.54. Yes. Can I stop you for a quick second, Vern? Uh, we're getting an echo. Uh, someone's speakers are a bit loud, so we're going to have to... Yeah, is that better? Okay. No. <laughs> Uh, is it me? Should I maybe. Let me see if I can mute myself? Is it me? Bring it down a little bit. Okay. I think so. Best yes, there might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. Sending you love, Denise. No worries. Yeah. No worries. Uh, at this point, it's just about 7.54. We've got one minute left uh, with John and, and Mr. X because they got to go off and do their shows. I just want to say thank you again, John and, uh, and Will, for sharing your stories with us. Really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah thank you, guys. Yeah, right. thanks for having us. And just uh, on just to, before I leave, just want to say that Chris always uh, was appreciative uh, of his time in gold. He is always talking about you guys and and how he says that in some ways gold actually saved you know his life. Uh, you know because he always had something to look forward to every day, something to wake up for every day as well. And uh, yeah, and he really did enjoy every moment uh, he was with you guys and at the station. So that's something I just want to share with you guys right. as well. Right. I just want to also add before I leave, uh, if I can, uh, to say the, 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 the picture that Denise uh, showed of uh, Chrissy uh, standing where he was and the perspective would be uh, through the glass where I'm sitting right now. In fact, the situation was often reversed because he would stay long after his shift and I would be standing <laughs> where he was standing and he'd be sitting in this chair. All right. So uh, we love yeah. you, Chris. I, can, I can't stop talking about you, but uh, one week on, uh, the rest of us will just have to go uh, continue uh, with what uh, Chrissy taught us. I uh, love well, you guys. You, here. you know what? Until uh, until love we can well. actually physically uh, wrap my arms around yeah. you guys, you know I love you, right? And uh, there was one other thing, if I, if I may, if I may, if I may, uh, that uh, if I don't say often enough, let me tell you that I love you very, very much. 
Oh, you on the air. We love you, love Will. You well. Thank you we so much. We love you too, man. We love you. We love you so love you much, Mr. X. Thank you, John. We love you too. Thank you so Thanks, much for John. sharing. I love you. I love you all. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great you, show man. tonight, okay? Class 25 with John Class and, of course, Mr. X on Night Flight right now on Go. Who to listen to? Who to listen to? <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you guys. See all you right. guys. And uh, Mr. X, before you go, I just want you to know that um, E Singh and Nora came up to uh, uh, Arena, a boss, after the funeral and uh, said that Chris was always telling them how happy he was at gold. And these past few years with us were his fondest and calming years of his life. And he was glad to be part of our family. And uh, Arena says it was such a to hear that he spoke of us fondly uh, with his outside friends. And they said, uh, one of E Singh actually said that. He was much more peaceful, much more relaxed and, and in a good place while, while he was with us at goal. And I think that's awesome to hear. So just wanted to share that with you, Mr. X, before you go. Have a great show. Okay? All Take right. Care, X. <laughs> that means that I would also uh, have to vacate for Mr. X to <laughs> You just to exchange come places, on on the two of you. Just exchange places. Yeah. That's it. Okay. But, but okay. he logged out. Did he log? Yeah, he logged out. Okay. Oh, okay. Never mind. Mind. I will. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, right. while you guys do that, um, I think Kat, if you can join us back again, that would be great. Okay, I will yeah, hop on to the minutes. other side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's my turn um, to just share a little bit with with you guys about Chris Ho. Um, I, to me, Chris Ho was always the the iconic punk guy, you know, who's like, well, he's the dangerous artist and all that. And I think we all knew that, uh, you know, we all know that about him. And um, so I saw him on stage once um, on TV. I was watching TV. And I recently, you know, just a few days before he passed, I asked him, hey, what was that? What was that um, uh, variety show that you and Christina Ong were on stage together performing? And uh, he replied back, even though how tired he was, he replied back and said, um, oh, that was the safe sex uh, show. Safe sex show. Wow, meet a cop. Let's do a safe sex show, man. I think we can do it again. No? <laughs> and um, I remember Christina was like there with her, with her sexy legs and big hair and, 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 and uh, fishnet stockings. And he was just next to her in his punk outfit that you know him for today, but with lots more hair. And he was just doing these moves that were just so cool. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy is so cool. And, um, and I'm really like, okay, that's Chris Hall. I was so young. And then, the next thing I know, I mean, 987, I never really got to, to, to cross paths with him that much. But uh, the one moment where he entered my, my world and my sphere again was the launch of Lush 99.5, the station that, was, that played alternative music and local music a lot more. And so we all went down for the launch and the, the color was purple and black. And, um, and he came up to me and he said, Vanetta, and he just gave me a hug, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, to be acknowledged by Chris Ho is like, I felt so special and I felt like, why is he saying, being so, so cool with me, you know, and I was like, I was still like very, um, uh, Paisé, like, <laughs> but I, I was like, I felt so welcomed to the world of, of, you know, of, of entertainment when he did that. So I love that. Um, the rest of the time, you know, you just know Chris Ho as, the gentle being and uh, uh, after family meetings, I would always give him a ride home if I had, if I was not doing anything else. And he would be in the text, you know, in the car with me and sharing stories. And he really shared stories about his, his childhood, his relationship with his mom, you know, and his, his life as a kid, which was not easy. Um, and then it, it, his emotional side of him really came out, which I, I'm not going to share because I think it was a very private conversation, but to, for him to share that with me was, was always something very special. So, <gasps> I don't want to cry. I'm wearing too much makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, anyway, it's not going to happen. I mean, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Cantarian. Like, what do you want from me? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Cantarian oh, too. Just <laughs> How does she just crack jokes as she's crying? I don't know how you do it. It's okay. Denise and I feel you. We're both, we're all Cancerians. Yeah. Oh, right. oh my God. Right. Okay. All of you are Cancerians? Yeah. yeah. Are you? Wow. 
I'm, I'm a Libra, baby. Libra. Libra. <laughs> I'm all about the balance, all about the scales. So Chris would be what in October, end of October? Libra. Libra. Actually, no, wait, wait, wait. 28th, 28, he, might, he might have crossed over into Scorpio. Scorpio, wow. Fierce, London wonder. He strikes me as oh. a Scorpio, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, the, um, the, um, the, the one photo I want to share is of his first day actually, so to speak. And we had this um, make someone's day. And the post was August 2017. Such an honor to start working with Chris Horn Gold 905. And <laughs> I was just so proud to be right next to him. This was at Giant at Tampanis. And uh, it was just so cool to have Chris Ho being a part of this, you know, and he was just so game for anything. Always having a laugh and, and teasing and just so excited he really was oh, you remember he was always always into the whole oh we gotta get this guy we gotta do this oh yeah uh, maybe one more one more here in a moment he was just so excited about making someone's day and uh so i always remember that day you know look at that smile so <laughs> love you chris ho you swine you make me cry again <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> Uh, uh, we love him so much. I want to thank everybody for sending in their messages. So many stories are being shared, but you know, it's very hard to in to interrupt all these lovely stories coming from our jocks. So please go and take a look at the stories that people are sharing about how they either regret not tuning in to to his show or they learn music from him. So thank you very very much. And uh, Fiona not right now says I love how he was always in the moment for sure for sure. Um, so I'm gonna like uh, blow my nose can while I, can Mike. I also just say oh, that yes. um, uh, you know uh, because I mean all of y'all y'all refer to me as the baby, right? Uh, <laughs> when I joined Goal, Chris treated me like the baby in more ways than one. Besides the food, he also started educating me about what he called "I need you to know and learn about the older music." Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> he spent. I don't know if you guys know this, but he spent the last two years trying to convince me to like the Pet Shop Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? Uh, Did he succeed? Uh, on Friday, when I texted him before... Um, before we lost him on Monday, I actually we I was I texted him on on Friday, and um, at the end of the message, I actually wrote, "P.S. Still can't stand the Pet Shop Boys." <laughs> <laughs> and he replied with a laughing emoji and a kissy emoji because it was like a running Aww. joke. He would come in with new facts every day to China, you know, to kind of sway me to 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 <laughs> love their music. And he was like, you know, when I was younger, I didn't quite like them, but as I grew older, I loved it. They they're great, and they're great because the. And it was a whole list. Um, uh, so yeah, over the last few years, he tried, but it was it, yeah, it was a, it's a thing between Chris and I that I will never forget. And now every time I hear the Pet Shop Boys, I can't not like them because I'll think of Chris. So nice, right. very nice. Yeah, Mike and Sue Ann. Yeah, it's time for you to share that. your stories. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've yeah. Uh, you you joined um, Mike. When you joined or oh, oh, Sue Ann, you joined um, just yeah. recently. Thanks for taking care of things from 2 to 5 while Kat was taking care of home stretch. So nice. tell us, how was uh, your interaction with Chris Ho? Um, yeah, I, I unlike you guys, you know, I, I'm part-timing on the station. And so every once in a while, I would come in and co cover either Denise's shift or, you know, or Kat's shift. And uh, I remember when Monday meetings were still, a, a, you know, a physical meeting uh, before yeah. COVID hit, he would... I was covering, I think I was covering Denise's shift and he wouldn't go home. You know, he would just stay <laughs> at the studio once in a while. He would just stay at the studio. And I remember he would come in and he would go on a rant about something. Um, taxi drivers. Something, taxi drivers <laughs> or something happened during his day or something that bothered him or he'll, you know, and he'll share with me about, you know, his family and how he grew up and, Anyways, uh, and then he would then proceed, uh, you know, in the last kind of hour of my show, he would then just put himself on that couch in gold, you know, in the corner there. 
uh, you know, he'll put his, his, I think it was a disc man, if my memory doesn't fail me. And he'll put his headphones on and put his hat on his face and just pass out for an hour. And he goes, wake me up at 4.45. <laughs> 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 or, yeah. and oh sorry i must have been um cat shift um but yeah so he would kiss and and i just always would laugh and i'm like how does this guy sleep through my show with and i would put the music up in my you know in the studio um but also one of the more recent you know stories with him was i was covering for cat and um this is covid and so i had to vt a lot of my my sessions because we're married and so we had segregation right so I couldn't do the show live, so I had to go on VT, and uh, I made a bit voice of track. voice track. Sorry, I record, um, record the yeah, show. Yeah, voice record, record. and um, <laughs> so I made a mistake with my edit, and um, Chris texted me and was basically texting me what it was about, and I was like, <gasps> you know, just freaking out. I was so freaked out, you know, because I had never <laughs> VT'd before, and I was like, ah, and I just remembered he just texted back and forth with me, and he was just like, darling just don't worry about it. Don't stress. He's like, you know, it happens to the best of us. Um, he's like, I did it before with a listener and a caller. And he's like, I got in trouble with it. And he's like, don't worry, man, all these things happen. You know, it's part of radio. And, and he always, you know, <laughs> would teach me things. And um, he was always so gentle, um, patient, you know, he'll come into the studio and he'll always tell me because I wear shorts and I'm like, Wow, your legs so sexy, huh? You know, and he <laughs> would just say things. And then, you know, when I had yeah. Casey, he would come in and he'd be like, you know, you're such a good mom and congratulations. And he's so cute. And he always just be, he would just always have such kind words to say. And I remember when I first met Chris because I was with, I've been with Gold for four and a half years now, whatever it's been. And when I first met him, just like I think most of us, we were very intimidated. I was, you know, I was just like, oh my goodness, this guy has tattoos on his head and he's <laughs> like piercings everywhere. And I'm like, ah. And then I would say that I would share the same thing as all of us would share is that he, when he hugged me, it was just like, oh wow, okay, yeah. this guy is, um, is so gentle and so, in some sense, misunderstood, right? And, uh, mm. Um, yeah, and I, I have so many great memories of him just in and out of the studio, you know, and I never got to see him, see him very much on a Cleaning regular up basis. While you're still on air. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so when I was covering for Cat, um, I was sharing this with Cat, I think, and uh, he would come in and he would just be so freaked out, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God I need to get my books. And he would just like, he would just be so like, you know, we call it Kanjong, right? So he would come in and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I need to put my nose. And I'll be like still doing my traffic. And he's like <laughs> putting his notes like on, you know, the panel. And he's like, Why are you overrunning by three minutes? You overrunning by three minutes? How are you overrunning by three minutes? <laughs> and uh -oh. I'm like, I'm so sorry, Chris. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I just remember like I was just in the middle of a talk set and he took my song out. And um, I was like, <gasps> And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's Chris, you know. He, um, it's like grabbing the steering wheel while you're driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, but he was just always so funny. And um, one more memory is I think my jaw dropped when he was at Rock of Ages. And he oh, yeah. did a set there. And I, I didn't know that he DJed, right? Um, and so when he played that set, I was just like, real deal. Yeah. This jaw guy? Yeah what the heck you know he's so talented and i'm like how did i not know this and i just i just remember looking around i shared this on my social page and i, I just looked around and everybody was just having such a great time and and laughing and just some people were the same as me like in awe of his talent and it was like what what and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> and um and so it was just such a great memory and so it, i was i just feel so grateful to have known him um worked a little bit with him got to party with him um and just got to see you know that side of chris and um yeah good memories and and i will i will miss him and it's it's yeah, yeah. thank you i i just remember this one time as well and uh mbs the launch of mbs and I turned around and I couldn't recognize him for a second because all I saw was this black figure with dark eyeshadow like covered. <laughs> and then I think it was glitter all over his head or something. It was just incredible. Right. I was like, yeah. oh, I was, oh, see you, Chris. <laughs> it was perfect. I loved it. Oh my Mike, goodness. over to you. Uh, 
oh boy, you know, so much has been said uh, that just, you know, mimic my thoughts on Chris. Um, the first time I met him was at the uh, uh, Make Someone's Day at Giant uh, East Coast uh, out there by Tampanies. And, um, and uh, I didn't know really much of him, except I met him once in Caldecott. And I was just looking at him like, well, this guy's cool. Dude. <laughs> this guy's like real <laughs> DJ, DJ, like cool, you know. And um, uh, so we had a we just had a chat and he just was telling me about how much he's into music. And then, uh, uh, you know, this was in the first time I met him. And then he, he and he stopped me to tell me, you know, how my dad was one of the big reasons that he got into the industry. And I was like, OK, cool. You know that, that you know, that, you know, I, I've heard this story a lot in um you know, in the radio business. And I'm just like, that's great. And, you know, always makes me proud. And I had no idea, you know, really just how deep this guy's history went and, and how legendary he is and, and, you know, what he's given to Singapore and, uh, and the industry and how much he cares about it. And, and just all the different things he does from the DJing to the writing, to the, to the, uh, to the club DJing, the, the, you know, radio DJing, the, the music, the, the, I didn't know he was an artist. I didn't know, I didn't know all of this stuff. And it's just, it what, what really, you know, strikes me about Chris is the humility. I mean, you know, somebody, somebody smart once said, if you have to tell people who you are, you ain't. And Chris never told me who he was never, but everybody knows who this guy is right and so my journey with chris really has been in the last uh couple weeks of you know knowing that it's getting close and then just researching 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 for you know putting together some audio clips and then putting together a video we're about to show you and so that's my journey with chris i've really learned so much about him in the last two weeks and you know now i'm just like why can't I have him back one more time <laughs> to just have a chat with him? Now I want, I have so many questions for him. You know, I just, it just, I had no idea just how deep it went with Chris. I knew he, you know, people say he's a legend. I just didn't know. And because our, <clears throat> our shifts were so separated from morning till evening and then COVID happened. And so all I remember of Chris is really the solid gold night, the, uh, which was just damn impressive. The, going to uh going to the, the you know out on the street which we used to do we used to go out on the street and we'd give away bags we'd give away flyers we'd get you know just doing this basic stuff that is uh you know very humbling and you know sometimes you know Vern and i'll be talking to each other oh when well, times it's gonna be over you don't want to get home <laughs> and there's this guy that's you know done way more than we ever will and he's just out there just like hey how are you just like you know, having so fun on and and yeah. so friendly yeah and so happy to do this you know yeah. yeah so um you know i my journey with chris really is is really been even though i did know him i really know him now much better uh and have a much better understanding and a, uh, an incredible respect for this man and uh so my story really is in what I've edited together here. So that's where my story is uh, that I'd like to share. Are we sharing that now or? Yeah, let's or, take a look. And yeah. then we can come back and say, uh, you know, goodbye. And, sure. And this and that. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. I, I really hope that, you know, it's it's prime time right now with the Wi-Fi. I hope this thing does, isn't too choppy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris Ho and I'm from Singapore. Um, I think as a little kid, I was just turned on by what I heard on the radio and mostly uh, Radio Fusion because I grew up listening to Radio Fusion. Zircon Lounge, uh, Regal Vigor marked for me that phase when I moved out of my family and was suddenly on a romantic quest on my own. And I remember years later when I heard the album again, I the first thought that came to my mind was, how did I manage to live through that period? I bought them for you. Graceless lady. Without Jimmy Wee, there would have been no Diggly phenomenon. There would have been no Jacinta, 
There would have been no Lizards Convention. There would have been no Humback Oak First album. There were so many things that Jimmy believed in because all he really wanted was local music to be heard. And he really put his money where his heart was, you know, to release these albums by local bands at a time when it was considered foolish and stupid and completely impractical to, to release them because there was no market. But he believed in it. Couldn't drag me away. Uh, yeah, I guess that, that is why I would consider radio to be important. Uh, because it is something that inspired me from the very, very beginning. I know this would reveal a little bit of my age, but I remember listening to Casey Kasem's American Top 40. Uh, every week, studiously, on a Saturday afternoon, I would never go out, even if there was an important day, a girlfriend called me, I would never leave that radio set. I would be studiously taking down all the top 40 songs and then see if next week that song goes up or goes down, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so it definitely inspired me and maybe that's why I'm in the radio industry today. Could make me feel bitter. And I remember when, when we kept telling the engineer, turn up the sound of the guitar. He was like, it's already maximum. Wild horses couldn't drag me. I started playing music um, towards the end of the 70s when I was invited by Damien Sin to be. In, uh, in his band called Transformer. Drag me away. Hey, that's the way of the modern world. Um, so I discovered um, the music scene here only when I started a band. He nodded courteously, he knew who I was, though I didn't know who he was till I realized standing next to me Here I am, I'm thinking again I think too much and I feel too much I'm wisely connecting, preserving and coaxing It wasn't a drama though I'm mellowing out Bit by bit and year by year But I think I will than just an affair deeper. My dream would be to retire to Thailand, be based out of there, and have the money to travel China. Serving and coaxing, it wasn't a drama Though I'm mellowing out bit by bit And year by year But I think I will Deeper than just an affair Bit by bit and year by year But I think I will Deeper than just an affair And I thought I'd gotten over you by now I guess I haven't The scars come deep Like an open wound Though I reckon you They'll heal Bit by bit and a year Deeper than just an affair Deep. We were actually just doing it for the love. You know, we were wishing against all odds that we'll get somewhere. 
Nice oh, job, no, Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? If living for myself is what I'm guilty of, go on and sentence me. I'll still be free. Because now it's my turn, with no more room for lies. I will survive. The years have seen my life with someone else's eyes. I'm just trying to undo some damage that's been done. At least, I know I've tried. I will survive. I will survive. Nice job, Mike. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've, uh, you know, it's been it's been emotional just uh, you know, putting all that together and uh Yeah. Uh, which has been nice because it's, you know, it's how I'm remembering him is uh Yeah. you know, just doing this and so it's been it's been Emotional, but I think important. Um, Kat, you want to say anything else before we uh, round up this evening? Um, <laughs> I'm glad I got to be a part of his life. Very lucky. Can I jump in with a fun thing? <laughs> <It's> really... <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> I mean... Chris is forever 27, but it would also seem like he's been around forever, <laughs> you know, yes. like, I, I mean, like I said, I think before, it's decades. Yeah. It's not years. <laughs> I mean, when I was born, he was already famous. You know, he was already in the world uh, doing his thing, but he, I, I don't even know if people realize this, but he has actually touched a whole generation of children in their listening comprehension. Oh, that's He's right. the voice of children's listening comprehension. Yeah. Do you know how many yeah. people have texted me and friends have texted me and saying, Chris Ho is the voice of my kid's listening comprehension. <laughs> Even my kid is listening to Rian going, this man, I know his voice. <laughs> Are you always a comprehension test again? <laughs> <laughs> He's in my English class. <laughs> I love that. That's great. I just want to also say that, uh, you know, he's also so inspiring and not just in the way that he was pushing the boundaries and music and all that, but also he said to me, you know, on one of our drives home, you know, do, do stuff that you want to do. Don't worry about what people think, you know, and he's the, of course the epitome of that, right? Don't worry about that. And, and I don't know, I, I guess I'm going to definitely hold that in my heart and go, I'm brave enough to be like Chris Ho. I might, mm. you know? And, um, the other thing is, uh, you know, ups and downs and all that, he was able to 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 write down in just a few words something to make me really come out of a of a sad or or, or uh, down depressed state. And he did that once one Christmas and it really just touched my heart. And it was just the perfect thing, you know, he did the yeah. perfect thing to make me feel better, you know, Mike. And sure the, did. Yeah, I remember it that. was just so cool of him to read into that. So, you know, he's like the the punk rock guy the, the 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 dj on 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 the evening drive time guy but he's also such a sensitive and nuanced guy because he could tell when something was not right with someone and i was like wow this is so cool he could read through it so well yeah the I, gentlest um, soul the gentlest soul yeah uh, about i don't know a year ago i started using i my mic settings i didn't like them they weren't weren't working so well so i just started using chris hose mic settings we all have a digital display we can change the mic settings and i've been using chris ho's settings for like the last year and i probably can i keep, confess you know, that's how i'll always remember him because every day i'm gonna see his name my there. voice I've you've been, been doing it as well to chris i've been using chris's setting just so that i have a bit of him with me on the microphone when i'm on air well let's not let's not delete that snapshot because uh yes. I, I, it, works, it works great not. for me and i'll, I'll never yeah. forget him Okay. Every day he'll be in the so studio with, with his mic setting. People are hoping that you can post the video um, on Facebook as it's for, uh, yeah, as its own. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We should do I that. I guess I'll yeah. just post it now. I guess. Or, so we've got a lot of posting to do. We've got uh, Chris Ho dancing to the hustle, and also the trivia yeah. video. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. guys. All right, I think guys. it's been a very very nice evening. Um, please do read through all the comments because the stories that have been coming in have been so lovely of people experiencing his music, people getting to know him, or just loving his show or learning music from him. So 
Somebody was saying that a uh, uh, way earlier on. Somebody was saying that they're uh, they're figuring that the twenty seven is because that was they figured that was the age when he started Zircon Lounge. Yeah. Um, if if he's in fact sixty five, then they weren't sure. I I don't know how old he is, but and we will never know. He's twenty seven, guys. <laughs> he's twenty seven. Yes. What are you That's talking right. about? That's <laughs> that. <laughs> But the dance Can of Chris Chris see, <laughs> there was once, right? I don't know. I don't know what we were talking about, Chris and I. And then he 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 comes in, and then uh, we were talking about something, and it led to the question of, "Oh, is it? Well, how old are you?" And he looked at me, and he was like, "I'm forever 27, of course." And then he just went. <laughs> And he walks out like full and diva, and I was like, "Well, I'm sorry." That's actually that. in his uh, his book. Actually, his who he said he said very specifically that his epitaph will always be forever 27. Yeah, and nothing yeah. else. So, Chris Ho, forever 27, forever in our hearts, man. So, thanks. Yeah. I love what someone has said. Love. Someone says that they that he was such a big part of their 80s, growing up in their youth, mm -hmm. and. You know, he may have been rebellious, but he was always truthful. And I think, you know, there is a difference. People saw him as a rebel, but I think that Chris ultimately was someone who wanted to speak the truth. And I think that's why so many people um, were attracted to him. Right. So he wasn't yeah. a rebel for the sake of being a rebel. He was yeah. a rebel because that's what he was. He was what he, he believed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks for all the comments. We've been we've been reading them. So, yes. you know, yeah. don't we think have, that they're yeah. not read. We've been reading all of them. Yeah. Yes. We'll look through again as well. And yeah. uh, thank you so much for, for joining us on this, uh, this Thanks, little uh, tribute. Thanks, Vern, for helming this thing too. No worries. Um, thank yeah. you for uh, um, taking, you know, the hunting, my snot and my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of love to John Class for sharing. Uh, a few of Chris's friends are on with us right now. So yeah. Lyndon, uh, thank you so much for joining us and, and letting us be a part of his final uh, send off. And, um, Thanks for being here. Can Thank I you, also Denise. just say a mm. special hello to Nomsta and Fiona? I know that both mm. of you um, were friends with Chris and you guys DJ sets together and you also have your own wonderful stories to share. So Nomsta and Fiona, thanks for being on here as well. And Rani Singham as well. Yes, Rani. I saw Rani as well. <laughs> for everybody for being here. Thank you so much. Cat as well. Thank you for staying behind after your shift as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, of course. I mean, yes. uh, I've been keeping an eye on our very own EXO. So yeah. yeah. So please <laughs> go and break the law one more time and give him a big hug from all of yeah, us. Yeah, okay? I will. He's uh, he's currently on air, but yeah, I've been watching him. I've been watching okay. him. Okay. To make sure okay. that he's okay. Good. So, yeah. All he right. did a lovely speech, and uh, thank you, Sue Ann. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Vern. And, uh, Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, as well. Thank all you, thank gold you diggers. listeners, for being we here all got as well. Each other. Yeah. So wow. we will definitely always remember Chris Ho and mm -hmm. his gentle voice. That's the one thing that also stands out. Um, and I think he's someone who was loved by so many people. Evidently, you know, in the last week alone, it's like a pile of love. And we thank you so much for sharing everything with us. And uh, we hope you remember Chris Ho forever. And I don't think that'll be a difficult thing at all because he was awesome. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks for remembering Chris Hole with us here on Go905. And we'll see you on air. Good Thanks. night, everybody. Good see night. Good night. Love, love. Good night.